Welcome to the Grow Your Independent Consulting Business Podcast. I'm Melissa Lieberman, a fellow IC and business coach. On this podcast, I teach you to become a consistently booked independent consultant without becoming a pushy salesperson or working 24 seven. If I can do it, you can too. Listen on to find out how. Welcome to episode 152 of the Grow Your Independent Consulting Business Podcast. This is Melissa Lieberman, and I am thrilled you are here today. Today, we're going to talk about the 14 systems that grow a thriving consulting business. We talked last week about the first five of those systems. So this week, we're going to talk about five more. If you haven't listened to Last week's episode number 151, no problem. You can go back and listen to that after you finish here today. You don't have to listen to them in order. I'll put it that way. So stay here, listen to this one. And then if you haven't listened to 151, go back and listen to that so that you've got the full picture and are ready for next week when we wrap up the last four. So that is what we are up to today. Before we dive in, though, I wanted to give you a little bit of update around the book. So last time we spoke, I believe I we just had the Kindle out, so the ebook. This week I can tell you that the paper book is also out. And I can also share with you that the book is already an international bestseller on Amazon, which is so, so crazy. But I'm so excited for those of you who have downloaded it and read it already. I've been getting questions but we've had it hit bestseller status in a couple of different countries. And so it is officially an international bestseller. So exciting. So if you haven't grabbed the book yet, I have two ways for you to get it. You can go, of course, go grab it on Amazon. Would love for you to find it there and buy the paperback version or the Kindle version, whichever you prefer. I have an entire library of books. I love reading books kind of the old fashioned way. I do have a lot on my Kindle too, or my uh, iPad, but I love having paper books. But I also want to offer to you that I have a free ebook download on my website. So you can go grab that. I don't know when I'll take it down, but I have it up there. Now that we've hit international bestseller status, I have the book for you for free on the website as a PDF, you can go grab it. It's melissalieberman.com forward slash book. And on there has, I have the book and I also have the toolkit that goes with the book. So there's a couple of worksheets per chapter that help you to put the concepts in place in your business. So even if you want to buy the paperback, which would be amazing, you can go download that free PDF version, as well as the toolkit and have that workbook that goes with it that will help you to put the concepts into action. So hopefully that will be something you not only enjoy reading, it has so many stories in there about other consultants who are likely facing, have likely faced the same types of challenges that you're facing and how they overcame those which I find to be so important to know that you are not the only one facing these types of challenges and how to overcome them, but also the tools and strategies and mindsets to help you grow your business and advance toward the goals that you've set. So that is the update on the book. Again, I think I mentioned this to you last week, but once the dust has settled, I will give you a full debrief on the process of writing a book and the lessons that I've learned. I've learned a lot, a lot of lessons. I will share them with you. The good, the bad, the ugly. Okay, so with that, let's dive into today's episode. Again, we're talking about the 14 systems that will grow a thriving consulting business for you. Last week, we touched on the first five. Today, we're going to touch on the next five, not even touch on them. We're diving into the next five. And then next week, we'll do the final four. And it's really centered around this question of what makes one consultant succeed more quickly, more 
efficiently, more effectively, more deeply than another consultant? What is the difference when you look at one business? This has been such a driving question for me. I look at consulting businesses all day long. That's what I do. That's what I love doing. And I want to help you succeed more quickly and more effortlessly and with less second guessing for yourself. And so one of the driving questions around the work that I do and you know in the book of course was around the idea of when you have two consultants who have similar backgrounds, similar expertise, similar target market that they serve, what makes one more successful than the other? And that's what it comes down to these 14 systems that we've been talking about Again, last week we touched on the first five. Today we're going to dive into the next five. So let me just remind you what those first five were. Again, if you haven't listened to that full episode, go back and do that. But I'll give you the first five here just as a summary. And then we're going to really talk in depth about the next five. So the first five systems that we talked about last week were define your three-year vision and goals, implement an assessment system that you leverage repetitively, Number three, define your compelling service portfolio. Number four, establish your pricing framework. And number five, really detail out your business model that maps back to that three-year vision and goals, leverages your services portfolio, and really brings that and your pricing together into a workable business model. So those were the first five systems. Today, we're going to talk about the next five systems. And the first one is probably the one that is usually top of mind, maybe top of mind for you, having a predictable lead gen system, a lead generation system that fills your pipeline that's predictable, repeatable, and formulaic. This is at the heart of a thriving consulting business and one that keeps So many consultants, maybe you, up at night because it can be stressful. It can feel out of control. And so that's what I want to talk with you about today. We're going to talk about what does it often look like for consultants. It can look very sporadic, very spotty, very reactive, and put you into a place where, into one of those feast or famine type cycles where you either have business or you don't have business or you get a lead, you turn it into a client, you neglect your lead generation system until you start to wrap up the project and the project either ends abruptly and you don't have any other work in the pipeline or the project ends the way that it was going to end on, you know, according to the timeline that you had anticipated, but you are kind of on the back of your feet You don't start lead gen as quickly or as soon as you had planned to, and you have a gap in cash flow. This is over and over again what I see for consultants. And then because of that type of cycle, it creates reactivity and you end up taking what you can get or what I call the creating the make it work business model. You're making it work, whatever comes to you, whether it's a referral of work that you appreciate, but you don't really want to be doing, or perhaps you're dependent on third parties like recruiters or marketplaces, whatever it is, it can be very reactive. It can feel very difficult to balance lead gen you know, with your client delivery. And so this system is one of the most important, but also the one that really gives so many consultants and perhaps you to a lot of challenges. And so thinking about a predictable lead generation system and focusing on creating one of those can be one of the most important things that you do for your business. Figuring out how to have a, let's shift now to talk about what a successful system looks like, lead generation system. It looks like having a dual strategy where you've got a combination of outbound leads and inbound leads. And over time, having more inbound leads and really not needing to rely on the outbound leads. It's very formulaic. 
you know if you do X, then that will create Y in your pipeline in about Z amount of time. By that, I mean, let me give you an example. For you, for lead generation, let's say that your primary outbound lead generation activity is networking, meeting new potential clients, new potential channel partners, new potential collaborators, new potential refers. When I say formulaic, in that example, you know that if you network and have three calls a week, for example, that it typically leads to one opportunity and that usually takes you a month of that type of activity to create the pipeline, the one opportunity in the pipeline you see. So that's an example of the formulaic. From an inbound lead perspective, an example of, of having a formulaic lead generation system would be that you speak once a month to your ideal audience, to an audience of your ideal clients, and that creates two or three opportunities and keeps your pipeline full. That gives you some examples of what I mean by formulaic. And ultimately, the marker of a successful, thriving consultancy can be that you have more demand than you can handle. With, this is an important part of the equation, you have more demand than you can handle of high-paying, high-quality clients that have the type of work that you want to be doing, and you have a process for handling that any excess demand. So hopefully that gives you a really good picture of what this looks like, what a predictable lead generation system looks like so that you can focus on that. If you focus on creating just this one system in your business over the next quarter, imagine what difference it will make for you in the results that you're creating over the course of this year. Okay, now let's talk about the next system, which is your high quality sales and proposal system. What this means is essentially the step-by-step -step sales process that you lead a client through from opportunity to signing a contract or making a decision. And what this often looks like for independent consultants is very reactive. It's so common to let the client take the lead, to make sure that have the client make sure that you're talking to the right people internally. And it can turn into more of an interview than a consulting sales process if you're not careful. And when it's more of an interview, it creates this dynamic where you're not a peer or a sounding board or a thought partner to your potential client. It puts you into that frame of mind. They, they've hired a, another resource that they're leveraging. That creates a dynamic where you are potentially not doing the type of work that you want to be doing. You're not getting paid at the level you want to be getting paid. And ultimately, you're turning into more of an extra pair of hands than a consultant. The other thing that this does is you, it makes a situation where you're not getting the important inputs that you need to build up the proposal. And so as we think about a high quality sales and proposal system, what that looks like is that you have a prescribed step-by-step -step process. You explain that to your potential consulting client in the beginning and get their buy-in and get their input about who needs to be involved in the decision-making process and who will have inputs and potentially be blockers so that you can address that up front. A successful sales and proposal system also is defined in such a way that you're asking the questions that you need to ask in order to uncover the value drivers for your potential client and the engagement that you're working on and can really help them to understand what the benefits are in a quantifiable way to the type of work that you're proposing. The other thing that's important in this high quality sales and proposal system is that you are implementing it with a healthy, productive sales mindset instead of feeling awkward or bad at selling. 
And that's once part of this that consultants often overlook. And I want to make sure that you've got that in place for your business. Okay, let's talk about the eighth system here, the audience awareness system. This is where you are making potential clients and referrers, collaborators, channel partners aware of you. This is where you are standing out as a thought leader in the industry and for the niche that you specialize in. It may look like networking. It may look like speaking or publishing thought leadership articles or blogs, industry publications. What this often looks like is that we rely on things like LinkedIn. We rely on our existing network and our past clients, and we don't have a thriving or even a sustainable or repeatable way to continuously add new audience members you know, to our existing audience so that we're visible to more decision makers and stand out as a thought leader in the specialization in the industry that you serve. You might be relying on LinkedIn and not having a formalized system to capture your own audience by adding value and capturing things like their email address so that you own it. And it's not something you're relying on LinkedIn, who, by the way, can shut down your account at any moment. So what a successful system looks like, audience awareness system looks like, is that you have a mechanism, such as an email list, to capture that audience. And you have a way to get in front of new people to add to that audience, to create and expand your audience on a monthly basis. So ultimately, you have more potential clients becoming aware of you and understanding the value that you provide to them. That then leads to system number nine, which is the top of mind system, the staying top of mind system, I should say. This is where you have built an audience and now you need to stay top of mind with them individually and also as an entire audience. So once someone has come to be aware of you, a potential client or a referrer or a collaborator, another independent consultant who maybe works with the same type of audience. So once you've found them, that was the last system that we talked about, then you want to implement a system where you're staying top of mind, where you're nurturing that relationship and continuously adding value. That's what I call the stay top of mind system. What this often looks like is sporadic at best, very usually focused on looking at this system and thinking about how do I get back in touch with the people that I've met when you need a new lead, when your pipeline is dry. And of course, that makes you feel guilty. Oh, I should have kept in touch with them more frequently. And it can create a lot of friction in your lead generation and your business development process as a result. But if you put this stay top of mind system in place, What it looks like from a successful business perspective is that you've got a continuous system to add value to your audience, both individually by maintaining individual relationships, and then also with your entire audience, where, for example, you're publishing monthly articles to that audience, or perhaps you're doing a podcast like I'm doing, or perhaps you're Offering a quarterly executive roundtable where you're bringing together leaders in the industry to talk about issues that they're facing and be able to meet each other and gain that value from each other, from those peer relationships that you are cultivating, would be a few examples of how to stay top of mind. This is an important system, and and so often we forget about it as a consulting business owner. And as a result, we have this very spotty lead generation and pipeline result. If you're able to put a repeatable stay top of mind system in place, it is the lifeblood to contribute to a healthy pipeline. Okay, the last system we're going to talk about today is turning client delivery into an asset. So this may sound a little bit out of left field. A lot of times we think about client delivery as a separate thing. We think about what we just talked about, the lead generation, the selling, the 
building an audience and nurturing that audience. We think about all of those business development type things as one thing in our business. And then we think about client delivery as a completely separate thing, as if we're switching on and off, on and off. The one thing I want to encourage you to think about when it comes to client delivery is that this is also can be a benefit to your business itself. It's not just delivering benefit to your clients, which of course is incredibly important, but what it also is, is an opportunity for you to build an asset for your business. So think about, this is something that most consultants overlook. And I wanna bring this to your attention that this is really important and an opportunity for you to turn that client delivery work that you're doing into an asset for your business. And what I mean by that is as you're delivering for your clients consistently and constantly thinking about what is the framework that I'm using for this client? What are the repeatable methodologies that I'm using for this client? What do I do over and over again that just comes naturally to me that I can codify in order to use this over and over and over again for other clients? It ends up making your sales processes when you are able to capture your unique approaches to the work that you do, it makes everything easier for you. It makes it easier to generate leads because you know exactly what it is you do for your clients and how you do it. It gives you that clarity. It helps you to sell because you have examples and you know what questions to ask because you've done this over and over again and you think about it in that way. It also creates intellectual property for you that sets you up to make your work more profitable, more efficient to deliver, and ultimately unlocks additional revenue streams, gives you the ability to bring on subcontractors if you want to, and give them the, this is how I deliver for my clients, this is what I expect. Whether they're client-facing or not, helps you to become more scalable as a result. So always thinking about your client delivery, both for the client first and foremost, what value they get, but also not overlooking the value and benefit that it can have for your own business as well. So that's what I have for you for these five more systems today. We talked today about predictable lead generation system, having a high quality sales and proposal system, building an audience awareness system to create and attract new audience members of ideal clients and collaborators and referrers. We talked about creating a system to stay top of mind. And then we talked about creating the updating and expanding your client delivery system so that it's both a value to your client and also an asset for you in your business. So that's what I have for you today. Now we have gone through 10 of the 14 systems to grow a thriving consulting business. Don't miss next week where we're going to talk about the last four of those systems. So you'll have all 14 of them. And in the meantime, go grab the book. You can download the free PDF and toolkit at melissalieberman.com forward slash book. And I will see you again next week. Take care. Thanks for joining me this week on the Grow Your Independent Consulting Business podcast. If you liked today's episode, I have three quick next steps for you. First, click subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to make sure you don't miss future episodes. Next, leave me a review in your podcast app so other independent consultants can find and benefit too. And finally, to put the ideas from today's episode into action, head over to melissalieberman.com for the show notes and more resources to help you grow your consulting practice from your first few projects into a full-fledged business. See you next week.